Hi guys, Alex here. Welcome back to Shook Unscripted. And I am super excited because today we are going to go ahead and do a side character extravaganza. Since Chantal is off taking her break, we have so many different characters in this community. So let's talk about it. First, we're going to go ahead and do an update on Pete's. He has a new job, but people aren't so happy with Pete's right now. Why is that? We'll get into it. And then later on in the video, we're going to talk about the most recent live stream from Nader El Shami. Dee Dee really does show her true colors. I thought that this was so wrong. We know the kind of guy that Nader is, but some people held out a little bit of sympathy for Debbie. I guarantee after you hear about this, you might not be so sympathetic anymore. All that and more coming up on today's edition of Shook Unscripted. Let's just get right into it. I mean, shallow -y. All right, you guys, so first for our side character extravaganza, since Chantal is taking a leave, we're going to go ahead and do an update on Pete's of my mind. We had last talked about him on Sunday night's live stream. He has a brand new job, so we're going to get into that. How did that go for him? But during that same live stream, we didn't get to see it, but he went off on Gwyneth Paltrow. I guess she is one of those, like, you know how rich people get, like, holistic stick and they got to do yoga and eat certain things. And I know that Gwyneth Paltrow was recently in the news because she shared her diet and it just didn't seem like a lot of food. But then she came on and kind of clarified that she is doing a special like anti-inflammatory diet along with her doctor. So that's just kind of the vibes I get like that holistic lifestyle or whatever you want to call it. But anyways, Pete's got very angry about Gwyneth Paltrow. I don't really think it's worth that much anger. But y'all know Pete's any excuse to rage, I think he will take it. He also got very upset during that live stream because he was talking about getting tested for autism and just said that it was very, very expensive. But Pete's got really angry with a member of the audience. I think they got blocked because they called him a liar about this situation. It's one to two thousand dollars. And yeah, pulling like, oh, this therapy for me to say that. I did have a therapist who said that. Stop with that noise. Gives me a being a liar. I don't think that Pete's knows how to let anything roll off of his back. Like, if you're going to do YouTube, you, you have to let a lot of things roll off your back. I know that it is very tempting to clap back, especially when you're faced with what is seemingly unfair criticism. We see this with Chantal. She'll see a couple of comments putting her down for whatever, and then she'll run to her community tab to defend herself when really she should be focusing on the content that she's putting out. But this just is foodie beauty. She's not going to let let anything go without some sort of angry community tab post. So Pete's has recently started this new job. On Sunday, he was complaining about his training. He has to get up super early at like 8 a.m., which is not super early. And he was complaining about how his training was at nine o'clock in the morning. And really, these are just like everyday things that a lot of people go through and Pete's whines about it. But it turns out that his job is not a scam. People were thinking that it was a scam. I mean, if it is, it's a very, very elaborate scam, Pete says. And when he actually begins working, he will be doing a shift from 5.30 p.m. to 2 a.m. So his entire evening schedule will be full. So YouTube is kind of up in the air right now for Pete's. He doesn't know when he is going to pencil in those live streams. I mean, you got all day till five, right? But Pete's is known to sleep really late. So he'll probably sleep until 4 p.m. But it is different when you are working all night. You know, I do have to give a pass for that. What Pete's is doing right now now is working from home customer service job and he does have quite the background doing this. Remember him and Chantal used to work in a call center like many many years ago but when he was living with Chantal in the villa he was still doing customer service and was working from home. And I do think Pete's anxiety, maybe like social anxiety, was definitely aggravated by the pandemic. I mean, he just wasn't going anywhere. And so to be away from the world, the real world for so long, I can see that it will be a struggle for him to get back into it after leaving Chantal. Now he will still be working from home, so he's not going to be out very much. But I think that's a big problem that he has and why he is in the state that he is in because he doesn't really leave his home, his bedroom very much. And I know what you're thinking with the customer service. Um, this guy is such an angry man. He's so pessimistic. Like, is this really the job for him? But Pete's had clarified that he doesn't rage at customers. He's able to control his anger while on the job. 
I don't know if I believe that 100%, but I mean, they're not going to keep him very long if he is raging at customers. I can't imagine working at a company like customer service like Xfinity slash Comcast. I'm sure that they get a lot of crap over the phone. I mean, I have worked jobs where you are in front of the customer, mostly in food service. And some people get really angry at you for things that you specifically don't have any control over. And that's one of the most frustrating parts of working customer service. It just feels unfair because you have no control. Like you're literally just like the bottom of the food chain. But Pete's was very bland when it came to talking about his first day of training. He just said that it was what it was. And he said that a couple of times even about his second day of training. And I think that that's all we're going to get. I mean, come on, I want the drama. What's the tea with the job? But again, people are upset with Pete's and this stems from his take on the tragedy in Tennessee. Now, my condolences go out to the family and the victims. And there is a clip up on the Piggy channel if you want to see what Pete said that kind of irked people because it just didn't seem like his focus was on the victims at all. And I do find that to be actually a theme when it comes to Pete's. I remember him talking about like the offender list and he was kind of saying that, you know, those kind of offenders, he was kind of saying like there shouldn't be this list because it ruins these people's lives, kind of sympathizing with the perpetrators and he had really nothing to say about the victims of these people, which maybe they should think about what they're doing. Yeah, it's going to be really hard for them to move on with their lives, but they've did it to themselves and I have no sympathy. And because of this situation, people not liking the way Pete's addressed it, they have started to again bring up his part in the neglect of BBJ. I mean, he was supposed to be watching that cat. And just yesterday, I watched that clip again of him screaming that the cat was fine. Do you guys remember that one from about a couple months ago. It was definitely odd to re-watch that clip again, knowing what was actually going on behind the scenes and what BBJ was actually going through and Pete screaming and assuring people that she was fine when that wasn't really the case. Now, someone in his live stream actually asked if he was still talking to Foodie Beauty and he responds to that by saying less than I would like. So I guess he is still talking to her. I feel like Chantal is probably ignoring a lot of his messages or maybe not not texting with him but Pete says he wishes that she would more. I think that he should absolutely cut ties with that woman. I mean, he has done nothing but regress since living with her in that toxic villa. You know, I mean, on the surface, it seems like a nice thing, right, to support this guy, your friend, but it really didn't help Pete's at all, did it? I mean, look at the situation he's in now. But I do have a little bit of optimism when it comes to Pete's situation. He does say that he's going to be working Monday to Friday. It's going fine. It's whatever. And as much criticism criticism as I do have for Pete's. I do think it would be funny if he left Chantal behind and really turns his life around, you know, does this new job along with his YouTube and then is able to afford a one bedroom place of his own outside of Cornwall and is able to make it. I just think that that would be just desserts for Chantal while she continues to spiral. Pete's gets his life together. I'm secretly rooting for that as much as there are things that I don't like about Pete's. I wish that he would just expose Chantal in their time together. I mean, imagine the many secrets that he has in regards to Chantal. And this is a very similar situation to Becky. I know Becky was an ex-girlfriend, but Pete's actually lived with Chantal. So it's, it's almost the same thing. I mean, neither of them, neither of these two couples were doing, you know. So how different of a situation is it? <laughs> Come on, Pete's, spill the tea. If you really want to make some extra coinage then you're going to have to spill the tea. All right, you guys, for this segment, I did want to go ahead and talk about Nader El Shami and his woman, Debbie Ann, because they have really been showing their butt lately. There was the whole drama with the necklace. Nader bought her this $6,000 necklace. Nobody knew where the money came from. Now she's selling it. I wonder if anyone actually agreed to purchase that from her. I would definitely attempt to get it appraised just for authenticity. I don't know why you, why the heck would you buy it anyway? There was also a picture of Debbie Ann that has been going around where she has a bruise on her neck. So people still have been talking about this couple. But over the past couple of years, Debbie has kind of sat by quietly while Natter acted a complete fool said terrible things about many different people, has threatened revenge, you know what. The whole time, whenever he does these kind of outbursts, she sits there and just goes right along with it. You don't really see her butting in and letting her opinion be known. This 
this clip from last night. Debbie Ann's true colors are finally kind of shining through and we get to see her go just as low as Natter. Let's talk about it. So there have been a couple of clips floating around the community. I will go ahead and link these down below so you guys can see that for yourself. But I will try to relay the information, especially for those that are unable to watch these two, because I totally understand that. Now, this all went down last night into the wee hours of the morning during their live stream called Did You Ever Cook With an Iron? That just reminded me of The Simple Life where she cooks the quesadilla with the iron. These two sound completely ridiculous. They have both lost their voice voices and who really knows why. Dee Dee starts complaining about Chantal and she says that she actually begged Chantal to drop these charges and then claims that it was all a lie. But Chantal got upset with Dee Dee because she put her foot down and said, you can only talk to me through these apps. You can't talk directly to Natter. So we know that Chantal was kind of relaying through Dee Dee what she wanted to say with Natter, especially because after the charges, she wasn't supposed to be speaking to him, but we know that she completely threw that to the side and spoke with him anyway, but they still talk about her all the time. Now, take a look at this comment. It kind of sets the tone for this situation with Dee Dee and Natter. This is from BBW King's video. Dee Dee, you threw your career, your life, your health, your dwindling looks, your home, your friends, and the goodwill and trust of your family away for an emaciated manlet who won't even let you speak one sentence without interrupting you. We love to see it. Ouch. The truth hurts. I do feel like Dee Dee has really changed since being with Natter, not only physically, but her attitude as well. She seems to be going like just as low as he is. Could this be her true colors or is this something that Natter is kind of bringing out of her? Because we have seen what he put her through and I wouldn't rule that out as a possibility. But after seeing this, I feel like no wonder these two associated with Chantal. I mean, they are all cut from the same cloth. Dee Dee does say that if you push her, you will see a new person that you haven't met. So she defends Natter against his accusers, calling them specimens instead of women, and refers to Natter as an innocent man, which is completely laughable. But this isn't even the worst of it. Natter explodes. He's extremely angry at the internet. They begin talking about a reaction channel called Gary that has shared some past trauma. And in referencing this, Dee Dee talks about him making gestures and saying, quote, get it up there again, in reference to this channel's past essay. Also, in regards to this situation, Dee Dee affirms, I will make fun of your essay, and quote, you deserved it. And she doesn't give a crap about this situation or treating it with any sort of respect. I mean, she went so low. Get it up there again, buddy. Get it up there again. Look, he's gonna insult you and me the way he does. He's Gotta get it. Hey. If you can dish it out, you can take it, buddy. And maybe we're the only ones who can make fun of you without being essayed, okay? I, maybe we're the only two people I'm used to think can make fun I'm of you for it. being essayed. Yeah, and I will. Yeah, you, you deserved it. You deserved it. I understand like that there's going to be some sort of back and forth because this channel is a reaction channel to Natter and Debbie and they can respond to the criticism, but I just feel like this is way too far and it goes to show you who Dee Dee really is. But I do still have to question like, did she get worse with Natter? Is this who this woman is? I mean, she has given up her entire life for this man. It is very funny when you see kind of the parallel with Chantal as much as they want to throw her under the bus and people will go along with it because they don't like her. There is so many things in common. I mean, Dee Dee has given up so much for this man. Chantal has given up so much for her man. I do think that in the end, like Salah, even if he is scamming her, is a better man than Natter. But yeah, this whole situation was just so messed up. I felt like I needed to share it with you guys, especially those that may have felt sympathetic towards Dee Dee. Because I know I have, for sure. I mean, nobody deserves to go through what she went through. But she seems to be going along with all of this, even before. I mean, she never really said anything about the things that Natter was doing. Would you sit by and watch your man threaten people with revenge? You know what? I mean, she has been such a doormat. But also in these situations, I could see why she wouldn't want to stand up to him. I mean, obviously, he's not going to take that. But last night, we really got to see Dee Dee kind of chime in and let us know who she is. And it wasn't good. All right, you guys, that's going to be it for today's video. Our side character, Extravaganza. Things got pretty dark in this episode, but let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And I will, of course, catch you guys in the next one. All right. Bye, guys.